Code violations, one of the best and most misunderstood lists in all of wholesaling real estate. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to find and wholesale code violations. Code violations, I'm telling you, have become one of the most profitable niches in my business in wholesaling. Just imagine if your local city could be driving for dollars every single day for you looking for distressed properties with high grass maybe mold, electrical problems, structural issues. What if you had an army of people in your city that are doing it absolutely for free and they'll just give you a list all for free. Those people are called code enforcement officers and they write up code violations for people in your local city, county or municipality. Then we just get that list, we contact them and then boom, we wholesale them. The coolest part about this list is a lot of wholesalers in your market don't know how to correctly pull the list or they don't know how to actually build the right relationships with code enforcement officers to get these magical lists that will get you motivated sellers and now deals. So, so right now, let's get, let me show you how to find and wholesale code violation properties. Whoa, 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 whoa. But before we get into it, before I literally give you the magic lists on how I make so much money in my local market in virtual wholesaling, having people driving for dollars for me, the code enforcement department, you guys know you need to smash that like button and subscribe to get more videos from me. Hopefully we can help this YouTube algorithm so more wholesalers know how to actually wholesale the right way. So let's get into it. Okay, guys. So we need to first understand this. What is a code violation? A code violation is basically when the local city or municipality or county, the code compliance or code enforcement office, they fine homeowners in your local market for an assortment of things. For example, if the code enforcement officer goes around the city and finds a property with extremely high grass, maybe 10 inches off, and the person hasn't even hasn't grown, cut, their, cut grass. their grass at all, and they're just letting the property decay, then the code enforcement office is going to fine them money every single day until they get it fixed. Some common code violations are high grass, like I said before, mold or mildew outside of the property, or maybe on the side panels or the stucco of the property. Code compliance also fines you for having junk vehicles or just regular vehicles parked, parked on the grass or swale areas. Also, code enforcement also has fines on things, things they call in my local city, bad state of repair, which means maybe if the door is literally caving in or the door is in bad condition, the walls are terrible, there's broken windows, there's a lot of state of repair that actually needs to be done for the property, then they'll actually have a code violation for that. So now we know what a code violation is, but how do the fines actually work? Now, I'm going to say this a million times. I am not a lawyer. I am not a financial advisor. I'm none of these things. I'm just a real estate investor, real estate wholesaler trying to help you guys out. But in most code enforcement and code compliance offices in the United States, they levy usually a 10 to $50 fine per day. I'm going to say that one more time. They're going to levy a $10 to $50 fine every single day per violation. Let's say in my local county, in St. Lucie County, if I don't cut my grass and they give me a violation on December 1st and I don't do anything, that means by December 10th, if they give me a $20 a day fine, I will literally owe $200 in code violations. Now, the way to actually fix it is to actually cut the grass, talk to code compliance, have them come to the property, inspect it, say, okay, it's good, you owe us the 200, you owe us the $200. Now, you might be asking yourself, what if a property stays vacant for a year? Now, this is true. This might be shocking to you. I've seen code violations as little as $10 at closing that had to be resolved. And I've even closed on properties that's had $20,000 in code violations that the seller had to pay for to the actual city. Now, they do that. They have it as a lien on the property. Most of the time, if someone's vacant or they don't take care of the property, then the city just takes that $20,000. They, they take the property over sometimes or they'll just find you the $10,000, $20,000. Again, this a little more advanced, but you can negotiate code violations down. If you have a good relationship with the code compliance office, you can that, negotiate code violations down on behalf of the seller. Why do I, as a real estate wholesaler, love code violations so much? 
Well, the number one reason why I love code violations so much is usually when someone has a code violation, high grass, mold, mildew, they have abandoned vehicles everywhere. Usually those sellers don't really care about the property at all. What does that mean? That means either the property is vacant, which means the pro there's literally nobody living the property and somebody owns a piece of real estate, maybe out of state or out of the city, and they just don't take care of it and they don't want to deal with it. And maybe they would want a cash offer and a price really wouldn't matter. We can buy it at a very deep discount. Again, sell it to a cash buyer and make a boatload of profits, which I always love to do. Or the actual seller of the piece of property, maybe if they have a messed up door, there's mold everywhere, there's high grass, they can't afford to cut the grass. They might not have the money to do the repairs needed, and that's why there's a code violation on the property. Maybe we can give that seller a cash offer solution to actually get them some money and so they can actually get some money in their pockets, which means we can make money, they can make money, it's a win-win solution, which us real estate wholesalers love to do. So either way, if they don't have enough money to fix up the property or they just don't care about the property, Sometimes it's a little bit of both where they don't care about the property and they don't even have the money to fix the issues. That's two reasons that's double the motivation, which means we can make even more money on these deals. Also, if somebody doesn't care about a property and they don't have the money for it and there's a $10,000 fine on the house, that is a big problem for them and we can actually buy the property from them, put a cash buyer in there, make our wholesale assignment and help them out. And it's very scary for a seller when code compliance says you owe me $5,000. You can actually help become a beacon of light for these sellers and provide a solution. That is why I love code violations so much. So this arises an opportunity for us real estate wholesalers if we can get this code violations list. What we can do is we can get this list from the local city or municipality. We can actually contact these sellers and ask if they're even open to a cash offer. That is the opportunity for us real estate wholesalers to go in and help. You might ask yourself, Zach, this is so cool. I didn't know about code violations. How do I go find them? So let's get into actually how to find these code violations and get the actual list from the city. And spoiler alert, it's absolutely free. There's actually two ways to pull and actually have those code violations. You might say to yourself, well, I thought there was only one. Well, there's really two. So if you're actually local and you actually want to physically go on appointments and you don't want to virtually wholesale, what I do recommend you do is go to your, your local city hall or go to the code enforcement, code compliance office. You got to figure out where actually to go because every single city and county is different and go to them and ask for all open code violations for the current month or maybe the current two, three months, depending on how far you want to go. Now I pull it every single month. So I always ask for all open code violations for the month. But if you're starting out, maybe do the last six months. Now here is another quick tip for you. If you live in a certain place, let's say you live in Wayne County, Michigan, for example, that is a county that has Livonia in it. It has Detroit. It has a lot of cities inside of it. The cool part about that area, they have multiple code enforcement agencies. So you actually have the whole Wayne County that's driving around looking for properties to put on lists for us. So the Wayne County Code Compliance Office is doing that. Also, the city of Detroit is trying to do that also because both these counties and cities want to make money. Usually whoever levies that code enforcement fine gets it. So you got the city of Detroit having their own list for you. You have Wayne County doing it, the city of Livonia doing it. Same thing in Miami, Miami-Dade code enforcement actually doing it. Then the, the city of Miami doing it. Just like there in Wayne County in Miami, there's actually two different lists you can pull and they're both different people driving around in different routes for you. So we can actually get double the code violation list, which is awesome. So again, that backtracks us to finding it when you're going it, make sure you know all the code compliance and offices in your local city, municipality, county. Make sure you go after the counties and the local cities in your market. Usually there's multiple. I have a county that has about four cities in it, and that means there's five lists. So you got the four cities, they all have their separate code enforcement offices, and then you have the whole surrounding county that has it. So remember, you're probably gonna have to physically go to five different offices to pull these lists. But again, the more lists means the more money. So you can go, go to the local, local city, city and pull it, and hey, that's awesome, that's great build a relationship with the clerk there who is actually gonna pull the list for you. And usually you can go get it for yourself and it's pretty easy. But you might ask yourself, Zach, how do you pull the Wayne County or Detroit lists? You live in Florida. So here's another thing you can do. You can actually call the local city or code enforcement office and actually ask for the list 
over the phone to be emailed to you. Now, this sometimes can be a little more difficult. Sometimes the code enforcement office will give you a harder time because you might not be a local citizen. You don't really have to disclose that. But, but most of the time, you can get the list actually emailed to you. Now, most of the time, when you actually go to the city or you actually call for it and you ask for all open code violations for the current month, for example, hey, can I have all code, code violations for December or for the previous month or this month? Usually, they're just gonna say, yeah, sure, here you go. They're gonna give you the list. Now, there's some ways that they can make this very difficult for you. And let me list these out for you. So either they're gonna say this, well, Zach, we can give you the list, but we're going to have to charge you $5 per page on every code enforcement thing. And they're going to just give you a really hard time. And sometimes you have to pay for that information. Usually with probates, it happens, but most of the time you can do it for free. If you ask a very specific questions, I know I've gotten asked before in other virtual markets, I've helped people pull code violations through theirs. I've called, they said, Zach, we can give you the list, but it's $5 per page and there's 50 pages. So give me $250. I said, can you just send me a PDF instead? And they're like, well, no, we, 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 we have to charge you to pull it. And I said, well, I'm a tax paying citizen. I should have this information for free. It's public information. Can I, ask, can I talk to a supervisor? And I talked to the supervisor. I talked to a supervisor. I turned into a quote unquote Karen, Karen. for the stuff. And usually the supervisor is like, yeah, fine. Here, here's an Excel or PDF of the list. And I get it. So you got to be very, you have to be very staunch and you have to just keep pressing for the list. Be annoying. Be that person that literally is just going to keep trying to pull that list until you get it. So it's really cool in some markets where they actually make it extremely difficult. They're going to say, we don't have a code enforcement list here. Do well, do you have code violations? And they're like, yeah, of course we charge people with code violations. Well, do you have a list of those people? I mean, we have a list. Well, then I should have the list. I'm a tax paying citizen. So when people make things very difficult, code enforcement wise to get the list, just say you are a tax paying citizen and you have the right for this information. It's actually law. The Freedom of Information Act gives all public information that's not classified, you know, CIA documents, FBI stuff, that stuff you probably can't get. But the actual public information for your local city and county, it's a law called the Freedom of Information Act. Also talk to your co local code enforcement office and say, if they're not letting you have that list, say, do I have to file something with the Freedom of Information Act to get this? Usually they freak out and they'll give you the actual list. So don't worry about that. And remember, if your local code enforcement office makes it very difficult for you to get the list, that's awesome. That means that other wholesalers probably are not getting that list too. And if you can crack the code to getting that list, which I know you can, I've done this before. And in some virtual wholesaling markets, there's only two people pulling the code violations list and it's me and an actual attorney. So that means I'm one of the only wholesalers getting that list. I'm not going to reveal that market, but I'm killing in that market with code violations like SMS wise. So if you can crack the code in a hard market to get code violations, you can profit big time. Another really pro tip for these for, for young wholesalers out there. Again, most wholesalers think they don't have an advantage if they're under the age of 24, 23 years old. So me, I used to pull code violations when I was 17 years old, going to the local city. It was extremely hard to get them. What I always said was, like, hey, I'm a high school kid. I'm actually pulling a project and I need to know about demographics with code violations. Can I please pull them? And they usually like, okay, fine, kid. If you go out there saying you're a real estate investor, they might give you a harder time. So if you're really young, try to say you're doing it for a college project or a high school project, you might have an easier way of actually getting the code enforcement list. And when you're talking to these people, make sure you talk like you're a human. Don't treat these people like they're robots or anything like that. Treat them as humans, build relationships, understand their names, write their names down. And when you call them every month, they'll know, hey, hey. that's Zach. He's actually really nice to me. They'll actually make it way easier. And sometimes you can build a relationship where they'll actually send you an email to the list and you don't have to ask for them anymore. So build relationships with your code enforcement officers. Now that we received the list, there's only really three ways or formats we can get the list. They can so either send us the list, list with, which is a piece of know, paper with the list of the properties that have code violations and the type of violation they have, or they can electronically send you a PDF over email, or they can just give you an Excel list of all the code enforcement violations going on. So those are really the three ways you can do it. I know some crazy cities put it in a CD. You got to put the CD in and then convert it. That's a little more advanced. Sometimes you have to just get a VA to do it for you when it comes to that converting stuff. But most of the time it's a PDF, Excel, or a piece of paper. Then what we do when we get that list, we'll just convert it all into a Google Sheets or an Excel list. And then we just make it an easy skip traceable format. You know, first name, last name, address, city, state, zip code, mail address, mail city, mail state, mail zip code, 
and then the type of violation. Once we put all that, all those headers in there, then we'll just put the property address information in there. And then once we put all the information in there, then we have the property address stuff, but we don't have the owner's information or the mailing address. So how are we gonna get that? So what we gotta do next is actually find the owner's information. We gotta find what their names are and what's their actual mailing address. That makes it easy for us to actually mail them if we wanna actually send a postcard to them. Also helps us skip trace the list to get the best skip tracing data, even if we're doing it for free or paying for skip tracing. So we gotta get that information. So to get that information, you wanna go online and go to your local county's property appraiser or property assessor site search the actual address. What will pop up most of the time is the owner's first name, last name, and mail address. What you can do is you can manually put in all that information into the Excel list. So all those code violations now have a first name, last name, and then a mailing address. Or if you have some money, you can pay a VA to manually do this for you. That's kind of what I do with my virtual assistants. They'll actually go and they'll pull all this information. They'll do all that for you on the property appraiser website and they'll just put in the Excel for you. Again, it's a little tedious, but remember, the harder it is, the harder it is for other wholesalers to crack into this and do it. So most, most wholesalers don't even know how to do these steps. So you have a huge advantage doing it. Next is boom. We have their first name, last name. We actually have the property address in question with the violation. And then we have the mailing address. So now we just contact the owners. So there's actually five marketing strategies we can do for code violations. It's direct mail, SMS, cold calling, RVMs and door knocking. So let's, let's talk about how to do those code violations with those five marketing strategies the right way. So number one is just direct mail. You can do a regular direct mail piece, use an ROS postcard, whatever kind of postcard you do, you can just send them a piece of mail saying if they're interested in a cash offer on the property, or you can actually just mail them an offer with the ROS postcard. Use whatever postcard you want with those code violations. There's not really a certain ad copy that works really well with code violations. You just usually send them to the mailing address, easy peasy like that. A little more expensive, but they work very well. And it's not really that much work sending out those pieces of mail. Now for number two, three, and four, SMS blasting, cold calling, RVMs, we need to get their phone numbers. We're we actually going to have to skip trace those lists and find their numbers. So there's two ways we can do it. We can do the free way or we can do the paid way. Now the free way is a lot more tedious and harder. And then the paid way is a lot more easier. It really depends on your budget and really how big your list is. I think if your list is under 20, just use triple search. Don't even pay for it. But if it's 100, 200, 1,000, I would probably pay for it. So the free way again, just, just go, go to truepeoplesearch.com. I'm telling you, truepeoplesearch.com is an absolute amazing website that I used, especially when I was younger, to get free phone numbers for actual properties. So what you just do is go in there, put the property address, city, zip code, and make sure it matches. Sometimes you can put the mailing address in there too and just find the phone numbers, make sure the name matches with the phone number, put the phone numbers in there, then boom, we're good to go. We can actually SMS blast, cold call, and RVM that. Or if we have thousands, which is gonna take hours and hours, 40 hours to pull all that, we're just gonna go to batchleads.com. We're gonna use code Zach to get 50% off. Again, code Z-A-C-H, all caps, Zach. Get 50% off our skip tracing. And then we're gonna skip trace that list if it's really high, like thousands, 500, 2000 list. Then we'll just skip trace that. And then boom, we can do these strategies. So number two here, once we find the skip tracing list, we're just gonna SMS blast. Again, there's not really one crazy good ad copy for SMS. I have a million videos on actually the outbound scripts for that. If you want that, just go to www.flippithrick.com slash free dash content and then boom you can go in there and find my sms outbound scripts find my cold calling scripts find scripts contracts all, all that, that fun. fun jazz all for free again the, the links are in the description below but it's www.flipwithrick.com slash free dash content then you just sms blast that and then we get into cold calling cold, cold calling code violations is probably one of the best ways to do it in my opinion the reason why i love it so much is that list is highly motivated and it's actually not that much you're not cold calling five thousand leads maybe do a hundred a week it's extremely easy to do and then i would just again go to www.flipthrick.com slash free dash content, use my cold calling script for there. Really just ask them if they're open to a cash offer on their property, just because they don't care about the property or they don't have the money for it and there's code violations levied on the house, provide a cash solution, then boom, we're good to go on that one. 
Then what if you don't want to cold call, SMS blast, or do direct mail? Then we can do RVMs, which are ringless voicemails, which means we can send a voicemail straight into somebody's inbox automatically without any hassle at all. I love doing RVMs. Again, RVMs are basically illegal here in Florida, so I don't do them. But again, if you're outside of Florida and if your laws and regulations permanent, then boom, I do recommend doing them. You can always say something. Hey, my name's Zach. I'm looking to buy a couple more properties in the area. Please give me a call back at this number, then use that number, and then have them call from a different number. And then boom, you can have a conversation and help them out, provide a cash solution to them. Then what we do when we do all of our marketing strategies, then we just have a conversation with the seller, which I have a million videos on which I know I love to help people with. So just have a conversation with the seller, try to provide a cash solution offer. So if you're virtually doing it, lock up that contract virtually, or you can actually go physically meet the seller at the property, negotiate a good price, lock up a contract. Again, www.flipwithrick.com slash free dash content. You'll have my free wholesaling contract, which you can easily use for virtual or physically wholesaling properties. And then physically go there, lock up the contract or virtually lock up the contract. Then we're just going to go find a cash buyer, bring the cash buyer through the property, either so virtually we have boots. boots on the ground for a virtual wholesale deal, or we'll physically meet the cash buyer there in person, bring them to the property, get a get, price that's higher than the contract, then boom, make an arbitrage and profit from that. If I have so put I, a property under contract for $100,000 and a cash buyer offers me $120,000, boom, I made $20,000 on that piece of real estate. That's it. Now, Repeat. Profit. That, that is, how is how to find and wholesale code violations properties. Remember, when you're giving offers, think about how much equity the person has. If so the property is worth $40,000 and there's a $30,000 code violation fine, and we offer them $30,000 for the house, that means they're going to walk away with $0. So make sure they understand that. And some deals just aren't good enough with the equity. Again, we want there to be enough equity in the deal for us to actually make a profit on these code violations. So we also want to understand how much of a code violation each property has once we lock it up under contract and we'll call the city and say, how, how much is the total code violations for one, two, three main street? And they'll tell you. So you can know after or before you actually sign the contract. So that's it guys. Again, that is how to find and wholesale code violations, code violations, properties for wholesaling real estate. If you like this stuff, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much. Have a blessed day.